Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for your favorite Flash villain, and remember to like and subscribe for your own community next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Magneto, the master of magnetism, and I'm not just talking about his magnetic personality. I'm so excited we're doing this build and I get to talk about all of the spells that manipulate metal in D&D. Honestly, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to fit them all in, so I made a sped up list for the intro. Well, howdy there, danger! How Let's start off with our goals for this build, basically breaking down three mechanical things you can do with the control of electromagnetism. The first part of that is Electro, so we'll get some shocking abilities with shocking amounts of powers. Next, Levitation, both of other objects and of ourselves. Since there aren't a ton of magnet spells, we're going to do some Fietting, which means we're taking it to Flavortown. Finally, there's Fabrication, breaking things down to their base components and reshaping them into something worthy of their potential. We're also going to do it with Metal. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the Player's Handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just make sure that you've got the Metal dice for flavor. Intelligence will be number one, leading an army as a mixture of brains and bravado so we gotta have brains charisma next because i just talked about needing the bravado weren't you listening maybe i need to work on my charisma wisdom after that your nemesis slash best friend uses a lot of wisdom saves for things like charm person and hold person and we can't get a ring of mind shielding in this build which is the DD equivalent of your fancy helmet so basically we just gotta do it ourselves follow that up with constitution you have an iron will meaning you're the only one who can bend it that's a solid metal pun definitely worth a like. Dexterity is a little low. Magneto is pretty good at hand-to-hand -hand combat, but we can't be good at everything, and we'll dump strength. You lift things with your power, not with your arms. Mutants are better than humans, and half-elves are too. They get plus two charisma, and plus one to two other scores go for intelligence and wisdom. You get 60 feet of dark vision. Your fey ancestry gives you advantage on saves against being charmed, and prevents Charles from putting you to sleep with magic. You get two free skills as a half-elf, persuasion and intimidation. Start with the persuasion, then threaten if that doesn't work. You really did try to be nice ones. For your background, haunted ones get to pick some skills. Arcana and religion should go on your list. Your personal history is bleak. There's no joke here, obviously. Obviously, you can give your character a tragic backstory, but remember to be sensitive to people in your group who might have a different cultural background. D&D can be a place to narratively deal with complex issues, but never at the expense of causing someone else at the table discomfort. We'll kick things off as a wizard. I really wanted to use sorcerer since your powers are natural. That's like the whole thing about being a mutant. But the fabricate spell I put into the intro is only for wizards and artificers, and it's pretty important. Also, heat metal is only for, like, druids. But you don't really heat metal. This Magneto. So that means three spells, and we're only using two of them. Sick. There also isn't a great subclass for a Magnet Boy in Sorcerer, and Wizards get Wisdom Saving Throw Proficiency, which will help you deal with all of Professor X's stuff. There's three very good reasons to make Magneto a Wizard instead of a Sorcerer, but I'm sure people are still just going to yell about it in the comments. Thanks for boosting the algorithm! You get two skills from the wizard list, like History and Insight, because those are pretty good skills for a genius leader. Wizards can learn cantrips, mending puts two pieces of something together, or fixes a crack in it. It doesn't technically have to be made of metal, but it can be. Get used to that. If you refuse to use it on non-metallic stuff, that's a weird choice, but okay. You could also take it to Flavortown and say you're patching it up with some metal shavings you carry around. Shocky Grasp is a melee spell attack that deals 1d8 lightning damage and prevents the target from taking reactions. Mage Hand creates a floating hand that can lift 10 pound objects and flip switches. It's basically a little minor telekinesis with the caveat that there's also a hand there. We'll get better stuff later. For this level spell, wizards can put 6 spells in their book but can prepare an amount of spells per day equal to your intelligence modifier and wizard level. So we're going to focus on that because I know you don't have all day. Maybe you do. But not everyone else does. I don't. Catapult forces a dexterity saving throw of 8 plus your intelligence modifier and proficiency bonus, dealing 3d8 bludgeoning damage to the creature if they fail as you hurl something weighing less than 5 pounds at them. Since paralyzed creatures automatically fail to save, maybe you have your buddy Chuck cast hold person on your nemesis and slowly send a coin through their head. Little suggestion. Featherfall reduces falling damage for up to 5 falling creatures, which will help you and the Brotherhood drop in unexpectedly. I'm talking Mystique, Pyro, Toad, Yoshi. Wario, that turned into Mario Kart racers. My bad. Mage armor will make your AC 13 plus your dexterity when you're not wearing armor for up to 8 hours, which is still just 13 for you, but that's better than 10. To bump up the field of protection even more, shield adds 5 to your AC as a reaction for one round. Wizards also get arcane recovery, letting you recover spell slots on a short rest equal to your wizard level. I get the vibe that Eric is definitely that I'll sleep when there's justice kind of guy. Not a lot of long rests. Second level wizards can choose a school, and there isn't a wizard class for magnetism, but there is one for gravity, and those are both natural forces. It 
also lets me use something from wild mount finally it's only been like six months the wild mount subclasses are just very specific i think they're great i just can only think of like three total builds to make and they're not of super popular characters as i'm recording this i'm realizing that the word graviturgist is very hard for me to say without screwing it up consistently so instead I'm just gonna say Gravity Boy. Gravity Boys can adjust density, which will let you change the weight of an object or a creature for a minute, depending on your concentration. If you make a creature lighter, it's 10 feet faster, can jump twice as far, and has disadvantage on strength checks with the opposite effects if you make them heavier. Currently, the creature has to be larger or smaller, but that'll increase to huge or smaller at level 10. Spoilers, I guess, we're hitting level 10 a wizard. For this level spell, Witch Bolt puts the Electro in Electromagnetism. It's a ranged spell attack that deals 1d12 lightning damage to a creature every round for a minute, and you can hold concentration on it to deal the damage again each round without having to re-roll the attack. Metal is a great conductor of electricity and for some reason they keep sending Wolverine to fight you? He is literally the worst thing that could fight you. A long neck would be better. That's a mutant whose superpower is having a very long neck. It's real, you can look it up. Third level wizards can learn second level spells. Levitate lets you pick up something or someone that weighs 500 pounds or less and move it 20 feet as a bonus action. If it's a person, they can't move without pushing off of a wall or ceiling, but can also make a constitution saving throw to resist the effect. It lasts for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration, so you can pick Wolverine up and just let him hang out in the air the whole fight. Too bad his only attacking method is the Knuckle Knives. Fourth level wizards get an ability score improvement. Let's bump that intelligence for a better saving throw. If you want to levitate Wolverine, he has to fail a constitution save and that dude has constitution boiled into his bones. For this level spell, Hold Person might work better to take Logan out of the fight, forcing a wisdom saving throw on a humanoid. Failing that, they're paralyzed for up to a minute depending on your concentration. For your allies, this means melee attacks automatically critically hit, which will pair really well with the Mystique build. I mean, <laughs> what Mystique build? I'm not making one. The spell knock rocks a lock, giving it a shock that knocks it off its block. It, op it opens locks and makes a loud noise. I don't know why I had to do all the rhyming there, but most locks are metal, so you're basically a master of locks. Fifth level wizards can learn third level spells. Fly is gonna be my pick, giving a creature you touch a flying speed of 60 feet for up to 10 minutes, depending on your concentration. Once you get higher level spells, you can give it to more creatures with higher level spell slots. Leading the Brotherhood sometimes means transporting the Brotherhood. They're like your little mutant babies. Drop them off at revolution practice. Sixth level gravity boys get gravity well, letting you move a person's gravity good. When you use a spell on a creature, you can also move them five feet, either if they are willing or if it's a spell attack or they fail a saving throw. For this level spell, counter spell shuts down spells up third level or lower automatically and higher level spells with an intelligence check of 10 plus the spells level how does this relate to magnetism honestly i don't know but magneto is very good at defending himself and getting creative with his pretty specific power set like jean gray can just lift anything with her mind and magneto can only use metal and has to fight her and three to four other x-men at the same time what i'm trying to say is magneto's very good and don't ignore abjuration 7th level wizards can learn 4th level spells. Fabricate lets you create an object of medium or smaller out of metal from raw materials, like a bridge or a wall or literally anything that you can think of that would fit in a 5 foot cube. As long as it's not intricate like jewelry or weaponry. Again, Magneto gets his work done by creatively using his powers, so get creative and Minecraft something together. Magneto's definitely more of a Minecraft than a Fortnite kind of guy. That's not saying Minecraft's better than Fortnite, it's just saying that Magneto's really old. 8th level wizards get another ability score improvement cap off the intelligence modifier to truly master that magnetism. For this level spell, Oatluke's Resilient Sphere creates a sphere around a creature or object that's large or smaller and nothing can get in or out of the spell until it ends in a minute or when you lose concentration. If you lock a creature in, they can make a dexterity save to dive out or roll it around like a hamster ball while they're inside it. This is a great way to protect yourself or you could use it to lock down a powerful enemy while the Brotherhood squares up. From the third level, Lightning Bolt forces is a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 100 foot line dealing 8d6 lightning damage to those that fail and half as much to those that succeed as fun as creativity is sometimes you just want to zap people ninth level wizards can learn fifth level spells telekinesis is an upgrade to your levitate letting you pick up a creature of huge or smaller or an object that weighs a thousand pounds or less you can move that noun 30 feet with your action if it's a person or being held by a person they can make a strength save against your spell casting check but yours is capped so it shouldn't be a problem this lasts for up to 10 minutes depending on your concentration and you can switch the thing you're lifting without dropping the concentration also unlike levitate falling damage is a real thing so feel free to drop an anvil on someone like a bug's bunny cart 
cartoon. They probably won't be able to lift it off of themselves unless they also have telekinesis. Telekinesis pairs really well with the 10th level ability from Gravity Boy. Violent attraction lets you add 2d10 damage to a creature that takes falling damage within 60 feet of you, or add a d10 of damage to a weapon attack. For this level spell, Bigby's Hand creates a big metal hand that's actually made of force, technically. But you can activate it with a bonus action on your turns for a minute depending on your concentration. It has 20 AC and HP equal to your total hit points. It has 26 strength, 10 dexterity. When you activate it on your turn, you can move it 60 feet and do one of four things. You can punch someone with a melee spell attack that deals 4d8 force damage. You can grapple someone of huge or smaller with advantage on creatures of medium or smaller, then crush them when they're held to deal an extra 2d6 plus your intelligence modifier and bludgeoning damage. You could push creatures five feet with an athletic checks or just block creatures with less than 26 strength to give yourself half cover if you want to keep yourself safe. 11th level wizards get 6th level spells. Contingency lets you cast a spell of 5th level or lower that only targets you and takes an action to cast. But instead of happening now, it happens sometime in the next 10 days after something happens that you decide to set it off. Like Mage Armor when you run into Cyclops, Fly when you're falling from a great height, or Levitate if you want to save higher level slots. Magneto is the man with the plan. They could also call you Planito. Actually, that sounds like you eat planets. Why is Galactus not called Planito? Marvel really dropped the ball on character names, except for Longneck. Obviously, we all stand Longneck here. 12th level wizards get an ability score improvement or a feat. The inspiring leader feat gives up to six friendly creatures, temporary HP equal to your level plus your charisma modifier after a rousing 10 minute speech. Sabretooth, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch, Blob, Destiny, and yourself. You gotta take care of yourself too. For this level spell, Chain Lightning forces a dexterity saving throw on a creature within 150 feet of you and three creatures within 30 feet of them, dealing 10d8 lightning damage to all of them when they fail, or half damage on a successful save. The X-Men tend to run in packs. This is helpful with crowd control. 13th level wizards can learn 7th level spells, reverse gravity, reverses gravity in a 50 foot radius 100 foot high cylinder creatures inside can make a dexterity saving throw to grab onto something if there is something to grab onto otherwise they're going up if they hit the ceiling it's like they took falling damage and they take falling damage when the spell ends as well which it does after a minute or when you drop concentration again if you need to make this metallic just pretend you wrapped everybody up with metal first you're already pretending to be a wizard in a fantasy world there isn't really even a second step here 14th level gravity boys can create an event horizon for one minute per long rest meaning that hostile creatures within 30 feet of you have to make a strength save or take 2d 10 force damage and have their speed reduced to zero half damage and half speed if they succeed this doesn't even use your reaction or anything it's just a huge aoe of force damage and movement restriction for anyone trying to stop your revolution you can cast this with a third level spell slot later and it's probably a pretty good option for that for this level spell hold monster is like hold person but without the humanoid restriction so it would work on sentinels which is great because i hate sentinels 15th level wizards can learn 8th level spells. Mighty Fortress will let you create a castle that fits into a 120 foot square. Check out all the details in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, but this is a pretty good Asteroid M equivalent if you really truly just want to be left alone with your brotherhood. Not that anyone's going to leave you alone anyway. If physical revolution around the planet won't work, what about a metaphorical revolution around the world? 16th level wizards get another ability score improvement. Bump that charisma for better inspiring leader speeches and more intimidation. For this level spell, stone skin from the 4th level gives a creature resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage for up to an hour depending on your concentration. Technically speaking, it's supposed to be stone, but how different would it be if it were metal? Would that change anything? No, it's just a little flavor. For a version of that that's even better and doesn't need to be reflavored because the spell has virtually no flavor text, hit the 17th level of wizard for the 9th level spell invulnerability. There are 9th level spells that have pages of flavor text. This one just says you can't take damage for 10 minutes depending on your concentration. Wrap yourself in steel. Maybe pull the unbreakable steel from an enemy's bones, put it on yourself. I don't know. 18th level wizards get spell mastery, letting you cast one first level spell and one second level spell like they were cantrips. Shield is a pretty great option since you're not going to be making opportunity attacks with your reactions. You might as well just raise your AC by five every round. Yes, I know we could get the Warcaster feed. I don't want to put it on every single caster. For the second level spell, Levitate is great to guarantee mobility as you need it or for an ally. Since you can cast it for free, dropping concentration on it isn't really an issue if you just want to pass that mobility on to someone else. Pro tip, 
damaging spells aren't that great for this, as her cantrips are probably dealing more damage than they would anyway. 19th level wizards get our last ability score improvement, letting you cap off your charisma modifier, making you the best leader you can be. You're a master of strategy because of your capped intelligence. You're a master of communicating that strategy because of your charisma. For this level spell, Globe of Invulnerability is a 6th level spell that creates a 10 foot radius sphere of spell repellent that spells of 5th level or lower can't penetrate. This is better than invulnerability for keeping your whole army safe, as they can still shoot out of it, but guiding bolts from Cyclops, lightning bolts from Storm, or a fireball from Roy Mustang can't get in. Maybe you're a DM added Roy Mustang to the X-Men. I really don't know. Our capstone is the 20th level of wizard for signature spells, which are two third level spells you can cast once per short rest without using spell slots. Lightning bolt and counter spell maybe? Fly just seems redundant with levitate, you don't need a second concentration spell for mobility. But what if I told you there was a mobility enhancing spell that didn't require concentration and that you could give to an ally as well and that would pair really well with your just density from your gravity boy powers. That's right, at the 20th level, it's time to learn jump, which triples the target's jump distance for a minute. Pairing that with light weight from adjusted density, that's six times the maximum jump distance. Basically just full on throwing them without even having to think about it. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're a great leader with spells to keep your team safe and mobile. Speaking of, invulnerability is pretty great. You can't take damage for 10 minutes. That's very safe. Finally, intelligence and charisma are two very commonly used ability checks and you're great at using both of them. For weaknesses, your physical stats are bad. Your low dexterity with your AC means your mage armor and free shield only turns your AC into 18, which isn't bad, but it is when you consider you're using your reaction for it every round. The low strength also means that you're going to get thrown around a lot by anyone who charges at you with a decent strength score. Finally, wizard hit die are bad and your constitution is only okay, meaning you're barely going to have over 100 HP. Good thing you can just make yourself impervious for 10 minutes while you whittle people down with cantrips if you need to. 100 rounds is a long time, but patience is important for leaderships. Float around, protect your mutant brothers and sisters, and get the revolution your people deserve. Just make sure you're using your powers effectively, or you could suffer apocalyptic levels of failure. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for your favorite Flash villain, Captain Cold, Captain Boomerang, or Captain Gorilla Grodd. Sorry, just Gorilla Grodd.